Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to a new episode of Hajj Day Today. I'm your host, Omar Khalid, for the rest of the episode. We talk about the rituals of the Hajj and how to connect them with the real life issues in this program. Like yesterday, we talked about the essence of Hajj with Brother Junaidar. And tonight, we're going to talk about racism. It's, of course, a very big issue and it's widespread not only among Westerners, it's also and unfortunately, among the Muslims too. So we are going to talk, inshallah, with our brother, Abdus Salam, who is always a star in our shows in Huda tonight. So let's welcome him to the show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm really happy to have you again and again. We always enjoy discussions in Huda tonight. And inshallah, it's going to be a very deep discussion, a very nice mm. one, inshallah. So like, maybe we can start from the beginning of this discussion. I have noticed before going live that you never made Hajj before Brother yeah. Abbas like, like me. So, but in general, we as Muslims, we know the lessons that we can learn from Hajj in general. So from your perspective, what do you think is the influence and the effect that m must be positively like can affect us as Muslims to eradicate or to stop us from becoming racist or to maybe heal humanity from this disease? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Yeah, this is a very interesting topic uh, that's been chosen this evening. And uh, I mean, I have never been on Hajj, inshallah. Allah will invite me to Hajj. <laughs> um, Together, inshallah. But at the same time, from observing uh, the rituals of Hajj and even seeing documentaries, documentaries made on Hajj, you know, and about Hajj, um, you know, and when you think uh, about racism, it's really if we, I think if we perform it right, mm. it's a cure, not only for the other ailments that we have, but also for the ailment of racism. Mm -hmm. um, you see the people coming together from all corners of the globe as one nation, as one Muslim nation, and performing the rights uh, prescribed uh, to us uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, I, I had the blessed opportunity to go to Umrah Mashallah. to make a lesser pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. and. and um, you know, I did, see, I saw people from everywhere, you know, in Mecca, mm. and they're just coming and coming just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, most of the people, they're not just Arabs there. I mean, you see people from all mm. over. And unlike being in, um, being in Jeddah, mm -hmm. where you see the people, they're going about, you know, to work and so forth, and, you know, the restaurants, there in Mecca, it's just a mix of all kinds of people. Actually, because there is a misconception that you know, Muslims are Arabs. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Arabs are a minority, like 15 or 20 percent only. Yeah. And most of the Muslims are not even Arabs. And because they, they have this in the media, and of course, mashallah, you're a specialist in this field. Uh, you are in, we worked in the media, and you still work in the media. So you know this, the, the playing and the stereotyping. Yeah. With, like, they want to have this image of like, um, somebody who lives in the desert, or maybe wear certain clothes. We, of, of course, that's nothing wrong with this. But to have this image, th these are only the Muslims, and that's it. And we can have Muslims. They are like they look European, completely European. Yeah. They look like from different colors, different backgrounds. Yeah, everybody, mm -hmm. every place, as long as they take that shahada and they they believe. Um, so yeah, I mean, so you know, we have people, you know, stereotypes with the, what they show in movies, what they show, and you know, if people. If we don't really look into it, if we don't study, and if we don't try to uh, understand, if we don't seek to understand each other, mm -hmm. then you know these stereotypes can prevail over individuals. Mm. Um, so, but may Allah, you know, rid us of this as much as we can, at least oh. <laughs> in <laughs> this world, inshallah. So maybe you, what you said, brother Abu Salim, the, the solution for this is to interact, to know each other, and this is actually yeah. part of the, one of the verses in the Quran. Yes, that Allah created us like for to know each other. You know, I think that's a great solution. Myself, mm. I grew up, uh, you know, I started off, you know, was born <laughs> in Chicago, oh. which at that time, you know, it was, it was the 70s, and it was very segregated. Mm. Um, and throughout the 80s as well, I spent most of uh, my childhood there. And uh, segregated, you have the black people in one area, white people in another area, Mexicans in an area, mm. Puerto Ricans in an area, Irish, and so on. And that's just, that's just how Chicago was. Mm. If anyone comes, 
And then you had like the different like downtown areas where you know people come in, you know from all over. But if you had uh, like a white guy coming to my neighborhood, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and um, you you would wonder what is he doing here? Mm -hmm. He's not the police. Is he the police? Okay, is he is he the guy who you know turns on and off the electricity, or is he working for the city? Or if he's not, then it's like why is he here? Subhanallah. And that and you know who is he? And similarly, if a black man goes into a white neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Then it was the same issue until I moved. So I was, you know, I, you know, perhaps I was a bit racist myself because all I was really exposed to, I mean, my family, we had white friends. Mm -hmm. We had a couple. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I could count them on a half of a hand, you know. And um, so all that I was really exposed to mm -hmm. was primarily black people, unless I went downtown or to a restaurant or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, or encountered the police or went to a college and when I went with my brother to college, you know, one, one day he was like, he could take me with him. But other than that, in our neighborhood, it was black people. SubhanAllah. Yeah. I, actually, I heard that in America specifically, like most Americans, they didn't interact with Muslims before. And most of them, they didn't travel outside of America. Well, see, with that, you know, uh, before 9-11, you mm -hmm. see, it was a whole different kind of environment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm going to get to that in one moment. Sure. But my point uh, about my neighborhood is when I moved from Chicago to California, mm. and I, you know, I lived actually in Hollywood for a few years, and there you see all kinds of people. Mm. I mean, you see all kinds of people, good and bad, all different colors, different religions, mm -hmm. and your mind begins to open up. You're living right next door to somebody um, who is white or. Uh, maybe, you know, he's a rock and roll player, which I'm not into rock and roll, but <laughs> they wear the long hair. You say, what is, what is this guy with long hair? What is this? This is crazy. <laughs> Weird, you know? But then you say, when he walks by, he says, hey, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? <laughs> ah, he's a human being too, <laughs> right? Um, so then you get to meet, you know, the Chinese people, all these different people, you know, and uh, uh, it really broadens your horizon. And you <laughs> say, okay, people are people. SubhanAllah. It's not about race. It's about if this person is cool or not, if they're trying to be a good person or not, <laughs> uh, if they're Muslim or not, if they're even trying to be a good person in their religion. Perhaps, I mean, their aqidah is messed up, but are they trying to be a good person? Do they mm. treat you with respect? You know what I mean? Yeah, because so, some people, they mix between, like, if I'm not a good Muslim or I'm a, if I'm a good Muslim, I have to treat others who are non-Muslims in a bad way or in a different yes. way, they, they misunderstand that treatment is completely different from human. your beliefs. We are the creation of Allah, we are the son of Adam, mm -hmm. and that respect, sometimes people love that and they come to Islam, and even if they don't, at least we, we have a common, um, yes. I would say, a common understanding between mm -hmm. each other. And yeah. I, actually, I think, Brother Abbasan, this is a difference between Europe and America. Like, maybe Europe is more segregated. Than America, and know, because yeah. if you talk about America, for instance, the situation that happened with the last banning of Muslims from certain countries for a certain period, what happened at that time that Americans, a lot of them, they stood by the Muslims yeah. in the airports and so on, and they chanted for for Muslims, and that was like as like a shock for so, so many people, even Muslims. So why did this happen? Maybe this comes back to what you're saying, brother, Hussain, that they interact with Muslims. They yeah. they have seen them as students as maybe they, they are like colleagues, they are people. co-workers, they are people. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, so, I mean, if you live with someone, you, you know, we're humanized, we realize we're all human. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if, if I grow up segregated, mm -hmm. if I grow up in an environment where there's not much of that person, then whoever I'm with, my, they can define who that person is for mm -hmm. me, or the television, or something that's not, you know, painting a clear and true picture. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. That's what happens with racism. This is why people are racist a lot of times. Mm. Because they grow up in an environment where there are, these people are not around. And the ones who are around, their parents are telling them how mm. to think about Avoid them. them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or even how to think about them. Mm -hmm. But we can go really, really back. And I mean, mm. the racism in America, I mean, racism in America is really institutionalized, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I mean, America was born on racism. It became rich off of the backs of black people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they You're going back to slavery? Maybe yeah, going back like. to slavery, mm -hmm. and the, what they did to the indigenous people before then. So the country was founded, actually, the police of America mm -hmm. were actually, uh, when it, they really became organized, the first real police stations were mm -hmm. made to uh, capture runaway slaves. SubhanAllah. So when people say, oh, why are the police, why are they so <laughs> brutal, why are they treating black people like this? Well, they've been doing it. This is why they were created. Mm -hmm. And not all police officers are like of that. Course. 
but people don't know mm. because they don't study about it. And I just recently found out about it personally. <laughs> but, you know, racism is, it can be cured by the cure of all ills. One is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he sent us, which is Islam. Mm. And, you know, the rituals that Allah gives us, the way of life, the, uh, even, you know, the the hadith that, are, that's, that has been preserved are from our beloved Prophet Muhammad yes. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, even in his last sermon, he spoke about uh, this uh, subject of racism and that no, only people are superior by their deeds, right? By their taqwa, by their, mm -hmm. I don't know, I haven't memorized it, but I know, I remember it was addressed. So mm -hmm. the issue is, okay, mm -hmm. with, the, with racism, okay, like any other problem, if it's going to be cured by Islam, we have to practice Islam. Oh, wow. <laughs> it has to be something that's in our hearts, mm -hmm. that's shown by our actions, that's shown by you know, our, our, the way we speak and treat each other. So uh, have you noticed, Brother Bassam, maybe it's, I'm going to be a little bit straightforward, mm -hmm. <laughs> but have you noticed from your experiences that some of the Muslims, they can like, perform some sort of racism or some sort of stereotyping too? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're humans too, mm -hmm. and we have faults, and this is what we have our Islam for, to fix those faults. Mm. We have, um, you know, I heard some brother say, he said, we have uh, uh, Islamic culture mm -hmm. and cultural Islam, mm -hmm. you know. So if we're living in an uh, Islamic culture, we're doing things from Islam. Our culture is Islam. Mm -hmm. Um, but then if, if our Islam is cultural, then we're pre getting our culture mm -hmm. and putting it in Islam and calling it Islam. Like the way you dress, the way you eat, the way you Even speak. Even the way you think. you think. I mean, like say that I'm from a country. I'm not going to mention a country. Mm -hmm. But I, I, okay, will I let a black man marry my daughter? Mm. Interracial marriage. If I'm yeah. from, let's say, Pakistan or mm -hmm. Afghanistan, and I'm not dissing none of you, I love <laughs> all people. <laughs> or, or Eritrea, even, will I let a non-Eritrean marry my daughter, mm. you know? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not racist, but okay, well, if I come to marry your daughter, okay, so and, I, and I'm a good Muslim, inshallah, I'm trying to be, I'm practicing, I have a good job, I can take care of her, but I'm black. Oh, oh, you're not racist, black shouldn't have anything to do with it, should it? Mm. But it does, it does, you know? So the action speaks louder than yeah. words, even if I say, like, the lip service? Yeah, and I'm you might racist. even think that, oh, yeah, I'm a liberal person, but when that brother comes and asks about your daughter, mm. Are you asking about his salat? Are you looking at his skin or what's up? You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, it's a reality. You have people who will not marry their daughters outside of their race to someone outside of their race. And I mean, I've personally experienced that when back in the day before I was married and I, you know, was a good, decent sister, uh, you know, and I, I inquired, you know, can I speak to your father? And she was like, yeah, that would be great. She was happy about the whole situation, mm. but, she said, my parents would never wow. accept you. Oh. I said, why? She said, because you're black. Wow. She said, I'm not going to raise my kids like that. If it was her choice, you know, mm. uh, alhamdulillah, it wasn't because I'm satisfied so with my <laughs> wife now. You know, I wouldn't choose any <laughs> other woman, right? But, yeah, bless you with her, you know, but yeah. at that time, it was like, like maybe seven, eight years, you know, not more than that ago. But she was straight up with me. She said, my parents would never accept you because you are black. Mm -hmm. And they, she said, well, that's my parents. That's really unacceptable, you know. Yeah, in Islam, I, I spoke, I said, well, you know, you had young Sahaba, and their parents were, uh, were kuffar. They were non-believers, disbelievers. Perfect. A and the, 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 you know, the kids, or the, their, they were believers. So Sahaba. they went away from this way of their parents because they were following Great the way. Great analogy. Yeah. I like and this I, analogy. I, I said, well, what about that? She's <laughs> like, yeah, but... Mm -hmm. My parents are my parents. And in that situation, maybe you don't want to marry into that situation because yeah, you don't want to marry into a problem. Mm -hmm. But case in point that it's reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I say I use that out of many examples because that I'm sure, because she told me this is the reason. Mm -hmm. If you're standing in Salat and you're standing there mm -hmm. and you come into line, maybe you come a little late and then a brother, he distances himself. You know, you're supposed mm -hmm. to be like this, right? Your feet, right? Yes. But maybe he moves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens also because of oh, the different. But Allah racial. knows best why he's doing that. So I mm. can't assume that he's a racist. Mm. Zun Khair, I mean, have the best construction, mental construction. So I'm like, well, that's strange. Why, that's really why is he doing that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. And, I mean, it happened, it's, it's happened to be where mm. the person did like this and I did like this, which so, I don't think uh, that doing that is a sunnah, by the way. If they move, <laughs> is it the sunnah to close the gap again? I don't know. But 
And then to the point where he broke, left his salat. Okay. Left the salat completely? <laughs> he wow. left his salat completely. That's and I walked away and I just closed the gap. That's really weird. Yeah. Subhanallah. This well, is that happened in Egypt, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happened in Egypt. Well, I uh, expected that maybe it's like Western culture or something like that. It's well, actually, unfortunately, is a global culture mm. that dark is uh, worse than white. So that uh, white is prettier what, than what, black. What is the logical, like, um, uh, understanding of this? There's nothing there. logical about this. This is completely logical. You know, Allah knows best why mm -hmm. people are racist. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a global culture. I mean, America is kind of leading the world in a lot of cultural thought. SubhanAllah. And when we go away from our Islamic culture, that is. SubhanAllah. I actually, if, if, I, if I tend to say, like, I, of course, I'm, I don't try to do the opposite, but what I know from black people, they're very kind, very strong. Well, so that's a generality yeah, as yeah. well. <laughs> you ain't been to the neighborhoods I've been to. <laughs> you find some black people very cruel. Mm. Um, as well, so it's not about black or white. Yes, of course. And this is what I love about Islam, the people who really get it. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm not married to a black woman now, mm -hmm. but when we have, if we have an issue, it's about Quran and Sunnah. This is what takes precedence. I have a culture, mm -hmm. she has a culture, and that's great. It's good to embrace your culture, the halal of it. At the same time, mm -hmm. what is above it? Okay, we believe Allahu Akbar. We believe that what we have been given Mm -hmm. This gift of Islam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than it. We know it's greater than that. And um, that's the thing, not only with, and we're talking about racism, but it's with just culture generally. Mm -hmm. It's with everything. What is first? What if it's a work culture and it's time mm -hmm. to salat, but they want you to do something else? You have a free will. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So when we make Allah and we make Islam, we put it over everything else. Perhaps it's a, what I'm noticing too is the popular culture. Mm -hmm. Well, it may take off your hijab, mm -hmm. uh, wear uh, tight clothes, uh, follow the way that the kuffar are following. Mm -hmm. um, so you well, mean that challenge the status quo? This is what you're saying. Yeah, Islam. that's what Islam don't does. Don't try to fit in. Don't that's try what Islam, to... it makes us do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to be, we're not, we're not trying to be outcasts, yeah. but there are some things mm -hmm. that when it crosses that mm -hmm. line of what is right and wrong. You're decisive, but not offensive. Yeah. Like it's a balance between. Yeah, I mean, if you want to dress in your cultural clothes, eat mm -hmm. your cultural food, love your tribe, mm -hmm. that's it's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love, I'm, I love black people, mm -hmm. not all black people, but <laughs> generally <laughs> being awesome. black, if I could change it, I wouldn't. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would never change it. And that's natural. What makes us Yeah, like, that's uh, natural. I mean, Wanna, yeah, when I go even go back to America and I'm hanging out, you know, and even my <laughs> friends that are here, you know, we hang out. And, but at the same time, our Islam is over that. And that's what brings people together, mm. that you know my culture, I know your culture. Mm -hmm. and, and Hajj is a great example of that. Though, I mean, I was watching one documentary, and it was this African brother, dark, dark African brother, beautiful brown African brother. And um, it was a documentary and he was facing racism. In this mm -hmm. documentary, he would go to one tent and they would treat him differently than everyone else. It has? Yeah, and he was almost angry. He almost blew his hodge, you could say, right? Mm. He, he almost got angry uh, because of the way they were treating him. SubhanAllah. And uh, eventually through the documentary, I mean, he's on hodge. This is the time to correct our souls. It's a journey to correct ourselves. Mm -hmm. And he was going through it. This is his, that's what, that, was his test. He was facing racism on his journey, in his test, you know? In, I mean, life is a test. SubhanAllah. In the place that we shouldn't even imagine that there is yeah. racism. So yeah. th that's weird. And yeah. then he went through, I mean, they had a documentary of his whole, you know, yeah. Hajj. They had like five people and they followed them through Hajj. And he found, and he, I remember the night he left from his tent, he got his bedding and they showed it, he walked to another tent yeah. where the Africans were, you know? And he was very angry, you could see, but he was trying to contain himself. Yeah. And then later on, uh, he, you know, he found peace, mm. and then you saw him, you know, embracing people of other races. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cured that problem with them mm -hmm. as they went through Hajj, you know. So it's a time, if someone, if someone does have racist thoughts and racist tendencies, sometimes it's natural if you're in a certain environment to grow up, like mm. myself. I grew up in the quiet, you know, west side of the west side of Chicago was quite race, racist mm -hmm. because the only time you, the most of the time when you saw white people, they were coming to harm you. Mm -hmm. 
You know? So we're going to generalize because I have never met in my life maybe white people who treated me in a very good way. So you generalize. Yeah, you generalize and you say they're like, you know, you. but then when you get exposed to the wider range of society and people, you realize that this is not true. It's from the shaitan, actually. And racism itself is from the shaitan. You see, shaitan, he's a different species than mm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, and he probably, I don't know if he was the first racist <laughs> <laughs> or speciest or whatever you would call it. I but was made out of fire. Mm, he was made out of mud. I'm so therefore, I'm better. I'm better than that. It has no essence. No. So, uh, we, Allah determines what is what. SubhanAllah. We don't determine because we don't have the facility, the mm. ability to determine. Really so good. when if I'm better than this dude because I'm black and he's white mm. or I'm black and he's Egyptian or I'm black and he's German or I'm German and he's black then I'm playing that same game and if I really think that mm. then I'm really lost now if I have those tendencies because of the culture I grew up in because the world we live in it's a <laughs> racist world and this is the truth but the Islam is the cure to this problem <laughs> and, and, and if I embrace my Islam then, and I notice if Allah takes off the blinders and I notice this in myself because mm -hmm. you know you have a Muslims we're Muslims just because they're racist don't mean that they're bad people they just they have a problem mm -hmm. and, and if they pray and they get in touch with themselves and they say you know this is wrong and they make tawbah mm -hmm. then this is the best that's, way that's really great to, to face the problem from the beginning that in, we don't just try to like bury our heads in the sand we face it we're going to talk about this brother mm -hmm. Abdul after going to a short report inshallah so the brothers and sisters we're going to have a short report and come back with brother Abdul Salam to talk about our topic racism so stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa Malcolm X was known as a fiery speaker, as a spokesman for the nation of Islam. He had little trust and no affection for white people. He was accused by the press in the U.S. of being a black racist. When the Nation of Islam suspended him for commenting on the assassination of President Kennedy in 1963, a friend urged him to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca. Since I am a Muslim, and I knew that I could never stand up in public and represent Mr. Muhammad anymore, and at the same time I didn't at that time want to say why I couldn't represent him, I knew as his son told me, uh, Wallace Muhammad, that the only salvation for the Muslims, they would have to turn toward the orthodox religion of Islam. And it was Mr. Muhammad's son, Wallace Muhammad, who encouraged me to make the pilgrimage to Mecca and get myself orient oriented or orientated into the knowledge of the orthodox religion of Islam. Malcolm described his experience in Mecca with these words. Never have I witnessed such sincere hospitality and the overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as it is practiced by people of all colors and races here in this ancient holy land, the home of Abraham, Muhammad, and all the other prophets of the Holy Scriptures. For the past week, I have been utterly speechless and spellbound by the graciousness I see displayed around me by people of all colors. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors, from blue-eyed blondes to black-skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experience in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and the non-white. America needs to understand Islam because this is the only religion that erases from its society the race problem. Throughout my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white. But the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced by all colors together, irrespective of their color. You may be shocked by these words coming from me, but on this pilgrimage, what I have seen and experienced has forced me to rearrange much of my thought patterns previously held and to toss aside some of my previous conclusions. Welcome back to your brothers and sisters. We hope that you enjoyed this short report uh, about Malcolm X and we would like to continue with Brother Abdul Salam talking about this great figure. So you would like to touch upon some of the Islam? Alhamdulillah. I mean, when you look at uh, Al-Hajj Malik Shabazz's life, 
you know, Malcolm X, you see a lot of interesting things. I mean, he came from, you know, the streets and the criminal element, and then he started to educate himself. And he entered, eventually entered uh, true Islam, but, but he was talking about his journey to Hajj, mm -hmm. and, you know, and how it really eradicates the racism, and it's a cure to the racism. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. He's inviting all of the Americans, white and black, to Islam, mm -hmm. saying that, because, you know, America has a serious race problem, mm -hmm. and it's still prevalent today, unfortunately. And um, the cure to this problem mm -hmm. is Islam. Mm -hmm. he, he, Malcolm X, I think, from his background, he used to think like white people are from the devil, something like this. Yeah, I mean the, <laughs> the Aqidah of the Nation of Islam is mm -hmm. really incorrect mm -hmm. in, uh, in that aspect of mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, all white people are devils. Mm -hmm. and, but the problem is, he was in such an environment where it wasn't hard to believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, growing up, before I went to Los Angeles, when I lived there, if you told me that the white people were evil, pretty much white people are bad, it wouldn't be difficult to believe because 99% hmm. of the white people you see treat you bad. I hmm. mean, my mom had like a, uh, like a couple of white friends. Hmm. I think one white friend, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or a couple. And, but outside of that, the, uh, there's the police. They're being very brutal to you. Hmm. Or a white man coming to cut your electricity off uh, from your home. Or someone coming to do something bad to you or treat you in a disrespectful way or in a, in a way that shows hmm. you that you're inferior. Hmm. People calling you names. And, and I'm sure he came from a time, uh, Malcolm came from a time where it was worse. Or at least, hmm. um, you know, because in the 70s and 80s, it kind of waned mm. because of the work that was done in the 60s. Before you know? this, maybe but you have to eat from certain, maybe restaurants, yeah. from, you eat from certain type of wall, water. But it's, it's resur resurfacing mm. now. Mm. I thought to myself, if I ever live in a time where this happens, I'll do this and that. Well, I'm in that time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's back. And, um, uh -huh. But <laughs> what the brother saw coming out of that environment and going to the environment Mm -hmm. where you see that these are your brothers. It's about a brotherhood of submission to Allah. It's, it's the cure, mm -hmm. not only to racism, but uh, to the, uh, com Hatred the community general. problem that you even see in the black communities. Mm -hmm. The black communities are suffering in America, many mm -hmm. of them. And Islam is the cure to that. Mm -hmm. Like what? Would you like to touch? I mean, eco oh, oh, man. Mm -hmm. I mean economically for one mm -hmm. and um, for instance let's take for instance the man and woman relationship mm. where they're not getting married we're not getting married mm. so if we start a family and we're not married then you don't have a foundation mm. it's like if a man you don't want to marry your woman man then and you have children with her mm -hmm. it's like you have a garden without a fence around mm. you mean anybody can come in cohabiting without like yeah, uh, some, yeah mm -hmm. sometimes they live together sometimes mm -hmm. they don't but if you, it's like a, you have a garden, but you don't put a fence around it. Anybody mm -hmm. can come and no eat protection. from that fruit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, there is no foundation. So that's the main, one of the main problems is mm -hmm. the man and the woman relationship. They're not following the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're having children outside of wedlock. And mm -hmm. there's no solid foundation. They're not getting together and planning with that child. Sometimes that bond of the man and wife is not there mm -hmm. to be strong. One argument, that's it. You know, mm -hmm. two arguments, khalas, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the issues. And it reflects in an economic situation as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have some serious economic issues, oh. especially, well, with all people in the black community as well. But Islam shows us collective economics and halal ways to get your, your, your sustenance and the making the five prayer and Allah will mm. take care of you and things like that. And maybe the solidarity too, because when you pray together, we know our problems. Yeah. The message actually of the mosque should yeah. be this, the like center. the hub or the center, yeah. right, for, for Muslims to know yeah. each other. That if Brother Abbasan meets me and he knows that I'm in trouble, I see like another brother is in trouble, we can help, help each, each other. other. And, yeah. and, not, and, and create your own businesses mm -hmm. and support yourselves if no one outside is trying to help you. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a host of problems. I mean, drugs mm. and alcohol, it's taking a, a huge toll. It's on related also to poverty? Do, would you link this to poverty? I mean, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, but it's, a, it's not only a par uh, poverty problem, a mm -hmm. poor problem. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's related to poverty mm -hmm. in more than one way. You could talk about the ba the basic way. If, I, if you know, I'm taking drugs and, mm -hmm. and I'm doing alcohol, I can't do my basic functions as well. Mm -hmm. Not every. Some people can. Mm -hmm. They're the serious alcoholics. You know, they <laughs> function regularly. They don't, you don't even know they drunk, right? But also, you have to understand that the drug problem in America mm -hmm. is also institutionalized. Mm -hmm. It's not an accident. Mm -hmm. You know. You don't, the people who are selling the drugs, they don't, they don't bring the drugs in, mm. okay? And if you have processed drugs, which are cheaper, you get more time than pure drugs. Mm. So... The recovery mean? For, for I mean, like, if someone got arrested for with some crack cocaine, uh -huh. okay, they'll get more time than someone who's arrested with pure cocaine, mm -hmm. which doesn't really make sense, mm -hmm. unless... The ones who are doing the business are bringing it in, mm. and then they're giving to the poor people as jobs. So mm. they're working jobs. Mm -hmm. These people, when you go back to Chicago, for mm. instance, where, where I'm from, they have a serious drug problem. Well, you got this guy, he's selling drugs to feed his family. He's not even rich. Subhanallah. You know? He said, well, you know what? What, I'm not going to eat? Mm. You know? At the same time, he's not understanding that if he makes five salat a day and strives for halal, Allah will provide for him. I've been in, I mean, I haven't been selling drugs, but I've been in a situation where I don't have money, mm. but I continue to make salat and sh make my salat and strive, and Allah will provide. Mm. So that's one of the cures, the salat, for mm. instance, and them understanding and believing that Allah will take care of them mm. and that their risk is their, their sustenance is written for them mm. and seek it in the halal way because you're going to get it. Um, and understanding that about this is, if they could just understand that having the belief in Allah that he's going to take care of them and establishing their salat. Uh -huh. This would do volumes. This, the world would change. Mm -hmm. The hood would change. But, you know, going back, we have, you know, it's institutionalized, mm -hmm. the drug issue, the um, also, economic issue. I think the issue. difference between when you sentence somebody like to five years or ten years, I heard that if a white man makes the same, like commits the same crime as the, the black man did, well, they're not going to have the same time. I mean, for the most part, one has to do with, you know, of course, you know, if you can't afford a good lawyer, mm. <laughs> you have public defenders mm. who they make deals with each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get the first hit, I get the second. <laughs> you know, um, and you have to understand also that uh, again, America w was founded on racism. Mm. It's rich. If you had a free, if you had a slave who worked for you, you'd be rich. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, go to work for me. I'm going to be at the house. You know. So America was really, it's got a lot of its wealth from slave labor. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the way it is. But the cure, <laughs> what I do love about America is that you have people, <laughs> free thinkers. <laughs> and... Um, you can accept change? Yeah. <laughs> they're looking for it. <laughs> How do you think Obama got uh, <laughs> change? You know, right? <laughs> you just, because people want change. They, a lot of people want it. They're hungry for it. And not only Americans, humans. <laughs> so we, what is the role of the Muslims? How can Muslims, like... I don't know, I don't want to use this term, take advantage, but it's like our job as Muslims to do yeah. this. So what should Americans, like from your experience, so you live in the United States, what are we missing? Like what are we not doing as Muslims? I mean, it's very interesting. That's an interesting question. One, I think that we need to study more about Islam, mm. that we need to learn more about Islam. Mm -hmm. I know that's the cure to many ills in America, I mean, practically. <laughs> from a prior well, I mean, if you look at the rules of Islam, <laughs> it eradicates the problems that are existent. <laughs> I mean, clearly, not even on a holy spiritual level, which that is a whole other level, yeah, right? Course, because yeah. Allah makes stuff happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I think Islam is the cure. I know Islam is the cure <laughs> to these problems. However, <laughs> there's going to be a section of people who are not going to accept that. Yes. They're not going to accept Islam. And that's something that I have to come to grips with because <laughs> I love people. I want the best for people, but everyone's not going to follow the best way. Mm -hmm. But Allah knows who they are, mm -hmm. and who and uh, what I am I? Judge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, who am I, right? Mm -hmm. I pray that I die a Muslim. Oh. So, um, I mean, uh, so I I, th I know that the cure to these problems, as the brother was saying, as uh, Malcolm X was saying many years ago, it's Islam. Mm -hmm. If this person is racist, it's from both sides. If I'm a racist, but then I, I'm sure this Quran is the truth. No one could write this book like this. I'm sure it's the truth. And it's telling me not to be a racist. SubhanAllah. The Prophet Muhammad SubhanAllah. is telling me, so what do I have to do? I have to correct myself. Mm -hmm. So studying, knowing, and maybe knowing the life of the companions. Like, for yeah. instance, the first people who believed in the Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him. They were one from Persia, one from Rome, mm -hmm. like and the Arabs, and one from Ethiopia or yeah. Abyssinia at that time. So different races, different backgrounds, different cultures, and they were the first, ex we can say, the embracers of Islam in the beginning. Yes. The Islam was built on their shoulders. Yeah. So as you said, Brother Hussain, maybe what I understood from you is to change the thoughts itself, yeah. to change the... Follow mm -hmm. Islam, mm -hmm. uh, enter Islam wholly. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It says in the Quran, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, that, ah, mm -hmm. This is what we got to do. Mm -hmm. It's more important than ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's more important than our cultures, our color, our gender, mm -hmm. our region, uh, our profession, mm -hmm. and our education. This is true Islam. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't do these things and we push them aside. No. Mm -hmm. We are who we are. I'm a black mm -hmm. man. I'm, you know, I'm from Chicago. This is where I'm from. You know, this is who I am. And I'm, alhamdulillah, I'm glad Allah has put, because Allah made me this way. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm Muslim. I won't say I'm an American Muslim. No, I'm Muslim mm. American. So I put the Islam first. And this is what Allah, he demands of us. Mm. And when we do that as much as we can, then we're going we're gonna to find the successes uh, in life and in the afterlife. So the priorities. Yeah. Muslim, your nationality, yeah. your background, your skin color. Yeah. We are not saying that you say, no, 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 I, I don't care about my skin color. Yeah, like in the, the sense of like those people are, well, I go around with and my friends and so yeah. on. But what is your priority? Yeah. That's very I mean, good. the Quraysh, I think Muhammad Sallallahu he was happy to be from the Quraysh. Mm -hmm. Even though they were non-believers and eventually they became, a lot of them became believers. Mm -hmm. um, so being, you know, your tribe, your country, this is, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. it's only wrong mm -hmm. when you don't strain it through Islam, so when you don't look at it through an Islamic lens. What I remember from this is what happens in the mosques in America. And we're going to come back to this, inshallah, after a short break. Well, this time we're going to talk about it, inshallah. So the brothers and sisters are going to have a short report and come back with Brother Abdul Sam talking about racism. So stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. such sincere hospitality and overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as is practiced by people of all colors and races here in this ancient holy land the home of Abraham, Muhammad and all the other prophets of the holy scriptures for the past week I've been utterly speechless and cellbound by the graciousness I see displayed all around me by people of all colors I've been blessed to visit the holy city of Mecca. I've made my seven circuits around the Kaaba, led by a young Mutawaf named Muhammad. I drank water from the well of the Zamzam. I ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Mount Al Safa and Al Marwa. I've prayed in the ancient city of Mina and I've prayed on Mount Arafat. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors from blue-white blondes to black-skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and non-white. America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Throughout my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white. But the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced by all colors together, irrespective of their color. You may be shocked by these words coming from me. But on this pilgrimage, what I've seen and experienced has forced me to rearrange much of my thought patterns previously held and to toss aside some of my previous conclusions. This was not too difficult for me. Despite my firm convictions, I have always been a man who tries to face facts and to accept the reality of life as new experience and new knowledge unfolds it. I have always kept an open mind 
which is necessary to the flexibility that must go hand in hand with every form of intelligent search for truth. During the past 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass and slept in the same bed or on the same rug while praying to the same God with fellow Muslims whose eyes were the bluest of blue, whose hair was the blondest of blonde and whose skin was the whitest of white. And in the words and in the actions and the deeds of the white Muslims, I felt the same sincerity that I felt among the black African Muslims of Nigeria, Sudan and Ghana. We were truly all the same brothers because their belief in one God had removed the white from their minds, the white from their behavior and the white from their attitude. I could see from this that perhaps if white Americans could accept the oneness of God, then perhaps too they could accept the reality, the oneness of man, and cease to measure and hinder and harm others in terms of their differences in color. With racism plaguing America like an incurable cancer, the so-called Christian white American heart should be more receptive to a proven solution to such a destructive problem. Perhaps it could be in time to save America from imminent disaster. The same destruction brought upon Germany by racism that eventually destroyed the Germans themselves. Each hour here in the Holy Land enables me to have great spiritual insights into what is happening in America between black and whites. The American Negro never can be blamed for his racial animosities. He is only reacting to 400 years of the conscious racism of the American whites. But as racism leads America up to the suicide path, I do believe from the experience that I've had with them that the whites of the younger generation in the colleges and universities will see the handwriting on the walls and many of them will turn to the spiritual path of truth which is the only way left to America to ward off the disaster that racism inevitably must lead to. Never have I been so highly honoured, never have I been made to feel more humble and worthy. Who would believe the blessings that have been heaped upon an American Negro? A few nights ago, a man who would be called in America a white man, a United Nations diplomat, an ambassador, a companion of kings gave me his hotel suite and his bed. Never would I have even thought or dreaming that I would ever be a recipient of such honours. Honours that in America would be bestowed upon a king, not a negro. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Sincerely, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz also known as Malcolm X. Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters. And I cannot express Brother Bislam like our awe when we heard what uh, Malcolm X said that he was really like expecting what's going to happen. So, yeah, it's Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, this is amazing on um, what he was saying because it's kind of it looks like it's unfolding today. Mm. I mean, where now America is having some serious problems, some serious division problems, <laughs> and leadership there. You know, I mean, they need to accept Islam. <laughs> yeah, they pour, they're pouring fuel on fire and they ignite. Well, what the brother was saying is that mm -hmm. the solution mm -hmm. to the problem that's been in existence probably since America as we know it has been in existence is Islam mm. and you know what he was expressing is in, in it's truth I mean even now I mean I have a lot of friends you know white black and Muslim friends mm. and we transcend the racial you know, lines have you noticed what some in your experience like some of the white people before becoming Muslims and after becoming Muslims and you see the difference um, no, I haven't really experienced that. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I haven't had like a friend and he was a non-Muslim and then he became Muslim. Mm -hmm. But what I have experienced is just having, you know, white friends. Mm -hmm. We are they're Muslims and I don't even really think about them being white. Mm. 
Wow. Think about That's him being a brother. <laughs> and this is, you know, you know, this is how it is. Yeah, right. I mean, That's when right. we are Muslims, we're just friends, we're Never brothers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and then like even we can joke about not, you know, too bad jokes. We don't have to say bad things, but we recognize we're from different cultures. <laughs> but it's just, it's not a big thing hmm. because we know that Islam is paramount. It's the, or, or above everything is, and what you know, he was saying so many years ago. It's, and, you know, it rings true today. It's very beautiful. Yeah. You, know, you know, Brother Sam, the point of that we don't even notice that when, when Obama was elected as a president, so of course now you see that uh, celebrating and, well, America now is, now the, the racism is buried and so on. Hmm. So one of, of the Muslim scholars, he said, have you noticed that in certain areas like Egypt and Jordan, I think, that they were princes and presidents, that they were very dark-skinned, even more than Obama? People, they said, who? So he said one of them, I, I'm not going to mention who, but one of the presidents in, who came to, to Egypt, yeah. and he put the picture like side by side. <laughs> His skin is even darker. Yeah. And people, they, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. We haven't even noticed because it's, uh, we as Muslims in general, we it's, not think such about it. issue. it's not such it's an issue. issue. I mean, here in Egypt, there is uh, mm -hmm. some racism here. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it's not as malicious as the racism mm -hmm. in America. It's not institutional, you can say this? Um, I mean, yeah, it's not, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not so, so. Uh, it's not ingrained. Wicked. It's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, Allah knows best. Here it might be a thought. Okay, we think that white is uh, looks prettier than black. <laughs> I ran across that. <laughs> you are friends. What do you mean? Well, and then he said, "Well, you know, I think there's a little TV program that got you thinking like that." We talk yes. about it, and they say, "Oh," and it's like an innocent conversation. Mm. But in America, it's built off of uh, millions of people being killed, and it's all. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know the history of. Uh, all of this bloodshed and hardship, mm -hmm. hardship, but mm -hmm. this is Islam. Mm -hmm. So what is the next cure. step? You said, Brother Sam, knowing or understanding. Yeah. What is the next step for Muslims inside America to yeah. face the imminent threat that Malcolm X is Yeah, I mean, about? I think right now, mm -hmm. I mean, Muslims, I think there may be a little less racist in America right now because the Islamophobic thing that's happening right now. So when people have pressure on them, they mm -hmm. tend to band together, even black people. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when, you, when we have pressure on us, you would see back in the day, there wouldn't be the kind of stuff that you saw through the 80s, you know, all this gang violence and stuff mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. That you, because the pressure of the 60s, the 50s, the racism was on them. But once that's lifted, then, and mm -hmm. it's like with anything. So right now, as Muslims, uh, we're, we're facing a lot of pressure in the that's states the because the racists, Mm. and the uh, Islamophobes, all oh, they're band together. Mm. But what you notice is the people banding together too. Um, you know, you have people who are liberal thinkers, so they'll come in and band together with the Muslims, and you have some people, and which is good and bad, because mm -hmm. you have some people who are there saying that we want to live this lifestyle, yes. mm -hmm. and it's a wrong lifestyle, mm -hmm. but they're still sympathetic to Islam, mm -hmm. which inshallah, if they accept Islam, it'll be better for them. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but you're seeing that, so hope, uh, hopefully, you know, there'll be some positivity out of this of course. Uh, Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic phobia, mm -hmm. Islam phobia. And we shouldn't fall into the same category. It's and the same thing. we have thing. this stereotyping of, like, those people who are maybe siding with certain groups or political movements or activists, yeah. they're evil or they're bad. No, we have to assume the best. Maybe they don't understand. Maybe they don't know who Muslims yeah. really are. So we, we, we try to, how can I say, build the bridges. Yeah, and that is, because look, I don't, I mean, generally people, you know, they just don't hate for nothing. A lot of times it's ignorance. Perfect. We don't know what's Bad going experience. on. Bad experience. Yeah. A brother said, even with the Islamic situation in the States, mm -hmm. the, they don't know who we are. Mm. We're letting the media or their family de define who we are. Yes. The Muslims, we're not defining who we are to That's the non-Muslims. That's very important. And it comes to your profession in <laughs> the media. <laughs> so how, how yeah. can we do that? I mean, one... Um, I think we just have to be the best Muslim, Muslims that we can be, mm. because when people meet us at our work and you know wherever we are, we're being so this good is the, Muslims. the best way of like using multimedia is yeah. in real life. And also, mm. yeah, I mean it's happening. It mm. is happening where you see people when they're making. I mean we have to do dawah, man. Mm. I mean we need to let them know who we are and mm. what we're about. Mm. You know, I was at. Uh, I was at one job in America, and one guy was surprised to find out that Muslims believed in God. Wow. <laughs> he thought I was some weird, strange, mm. and I, I said, thank God. He said, you believe in God? <laughs> he came out and asked me, like, and he used to treat me bad, you know, mm. before then. He didn't know that Muslims believed in God. Mm. 
This is our core belief. We, we have a, you know, we the have the correct aqidah. We have the correct understanding of God if we mm -hmm. follow it. So this is a problem. People don't know if you have this white guy lives in an all-white area. He's not even going to the big city, and he's being raised. And they're telling him, "Son, this is the way it is." And you know, this is. It. Then he goes off to the army, and then he mm. has to fight, and then he Kill comes back. People. And yeah, <laughs> now he's like, you know, he killed some people, and now he's back, and he's he's big, and he's white. And he's mean and he's trained. Right. He, but no Muslim. Did, did he encounter a Muslim? Mm. Told no, him no, no real life experience. This happened to one mm. guy. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys, I saw this example. One of them, he embraced Islam. And I saw him on the Dean show. Mm. And he was talking about his experience uh, when he found out what Islam was all about. Another guy, it happened uh, maybe just a year, a year and a half ago. He, you know, the guys were going in America, they were going outside of the masjid with guns and drawing pictures of what wow. they said was our prophet and all this crazy stuff. One of them came and had a conversation with the guy in the mosque and he actually invited him in and he wow. came and... He's very smart. <laughs> he saw this is a peaceful place. It's quiet. It's, these people are... So he said, I'm going to leave my gun. He said, I'm coming back to the mosque. He said, I'm going to leave my gun at home. But I'm gonna bring, and I'm gonna bring a paper and a pad because I got some serious questions. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this is what it's about. This is what it's about, you know. He just is a good guy, you know. He just needed to know, and this is what it's about. Uh, but unfortunately, you have agendas that don't. I mean, the, the, you know, Islam is not benefiting them. Mm. And people knowing each other so is fun. not benefiting them. So it, it comes in the end. Uh, sorry, we <laughs> just <laughs> came up to the, to the time, but very beautifully said, Brother Abdullah. The ending of this, it comes back to Hajj. Yeah. When we meet each other, we break the, those stereotypes. Yeah. You so see, and, a, and Malcolm was an example. He was a great that's example of that. That's, yeah. that's really great. It was a very great discussion with you, Brother Abdul Salam. And I was pleased with your meeting you. Jazakallah khairan. <laughs> And Jazakumullah Khairan, dear brothers and sisters, for joining us. We talked about a very huge topic and its relationship with Hajj. And of course, we as Muslims, we don't, we are colorblind, if we can say this. We don't see anyone is, has a preference over another person because of his race, background, ethnic group that he is affiliated to. And that shouldn't be just lip service. We, as Muslims, we pray together. We do our, our acts of worship together. So racism shouldn't be in our dictionary at all. And the first step is to seek the help and support of Allah to get over this problem, inshallah. So until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.